The woman calls herself a witch. She claims to be performing an ancient ceremony of candle magic. The power of the planets has been petitioned, and as the paper burns, a spell is cast. This rite of witchcraft is being practiced in Salem, Massachusetts, a place where people believed to be witches were once put to death. This series presents information based in part on theory and conjecture. The producer's purpose is to suggest some possible explanations, but not necessarily the only ones, to the mysteries we will examine. Salem, Massachusetts is richly endowed with history and culture. For most of us, it is still best known as the site of America's witch trials. The past has left a permanent mark and Salem has come to embrace the witch, at least in some respects. The witch is the town's symbol, and also a constant reminder of a reign of fear and terror. The witchcraft hysteria of 1692 actually began here, in the neighboring city of Danvers. It was once called Salem Village. Dr. Linda Caporal is a social psychologist she has studied the witchcraft hysteria that once swept over the people here. Recently, she visited the Historical Society in Danvers. In December of 1691, eight girls were afflicted with what the Puritans called distempers. These were characterized by um, delusions of one sort or another, by severe convulsive fits, by odd gestures and disorderly speech. The girls were examined and judged to be possessed. Several months later, an accusations of witchcraft were made, and these were taken quite seriously by the community, and we have the beginning of witchcraft trials. In an atmosphere full of frenzy, the girls told the court of numerous people who they felt were in league with the devil. In 1692, witchcraft was a capital offense. At the end of the Salem witchcraft trials, 20 people had died. Nearly all of the victims were hung here, on Salem's Gallows Hill, now an old and deserted playground. At the cemetery in Salem lie the bodies of some of the judges who presided at the trials. Despite its terrible history, witchcraft now thrives in Salem. Meet Laurie Cabot, the city's official witch. People commonly believe that witches are the exact definition of uh, that Webster's Dictionary holds. And it says that a witch is an ugly old hag who cavorts with, a, with demons or, and devils or makes a pact with the devil in blood. Uh, people also um, believe that witches probably uh, drink blood and eat babies. And of course, that's not true. Uh, the word witch comes from the words um, magus, magi, and the Greek word magi which still means witch today. And the word witch, it means wise person, or a seeker of knowledge, basically. In the center of Old Salem stands a shop called Crow's Haven Corner. It's a kind of sorcery boutique, which was opened by Laurie Cabot. It has become a popular gathering place for those who claim to be witches. Well, how can we do it? Very good. Very good. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good. Listen, did that shipment of tarot cards come in? Yes, it did. It's in the back room. Okay, the back. The shop has appeal to curious tourists, but it also stocks the herbs and potions that are needed by a witch. You sure you don't want to go off? No, it's fine. I'll just take them away. Laurie's daughter, Jody, 
is an actively practicing witch. It has a wonderful scent, so if the person is someone that you know or would like to know in the area, um, it will, just by smelling the scent of the ribbon, it will, it that will attract will Lori's younger daughter, Penny, okay. will soon become a member of the coven. Lori's coven has gathered to initiate a new witch. The initiate is Penny, Lori's 16-year-old daughter. This rarely photographed ceremony is based on ancient rites. Today, it is an amalgam of many different practices gathered over the centuries and adapted to modern times. Lori begins the rite by casting a magic circle around the entire coven. Each witch is then anointed. I charge this circle to protect us from all negative and positive energies and forces that may come to do us harm. So mote it be. So mote it be. I draw into the center of this circle the energy of the universe and the wisdom of the pentacle. So mote it be. We bind your hands in infinity. We bind your creativity to the earth to aid us and help us. In the name of Isis, the Great Mother, and the holy maiden. Lady day, young quiet lady day, with blossoms in her hair, comes the form of the fairy maiden, leaving green everywhere. I charge you, Penny Cabot, witch, I give you the wisdom of the universe. We give you the responsibilities of creativity, fertility, and all wonderful and good things to the earth. So mote it be. By her mother's declaration, Penny Cabot has become a witch. As a new witch in the coven, it is now Penny's duty to perform alone a sacred ritual. In a forest not far from Salem, Penny gathers the tools to cast a spell. From pine needles, leaves, and from her witch's cord, she will summon the powers she needs. The spell will be for herself. It will focus and concentrate her natural powers of witchcraft. Her wand is a branch she has found. With it, she scribes a circle that she hopes will harness the Earth's natural powers to strengthen and protect her. Today, in Salem alone, at least 400 people call themselves witches. All are active and deeply committed. Being a witch to me means being more aware of your surroundings, being able to use more of your mind and make the life around you work more for you and to help other people. I became a witch because my goal in life is to raise my consciousness and it's a tool to do that. I'm a witch because it'll better myself and the people and animals around me. I became a witch just by basically getting involved in all occult matters and wanting to know about other phases of consciousness, which I think is really important because we don't use enough of our brain capacity to begin with. The best thing about being a witch is being able to use the vibrations of material things to work for you in the environment. I can control my environment 
through correct thinking, through putting the correct thought into the atmosphere by concentrating. I don't think everyone should be a witch. I don't think it's for everyone because to be a witch is a commitment. And to commit yourself, you have to spend a good deal of your life studying, learning about the world around you, various things. If we do healings, we have to know about anatomy. You have to be willing to make that kind of a commitment. And that's not for everyone. For Lori Cabot and the members of her coven, witchcraft is not an idle interest. It is an integral part of their lives. At 6 a.m., most of Salem, Massachusetts is still asleep. For Lori Cabot, it is the time when the day begins. For Lori, witchcraft is not something dark and secret. It is power and a knowledge to be shared. She does so every morning for a Boston radio station. It's Laurie Cabot's daily witch report. So let's find out what's happening out there, cosmically speaking, with the good witch of the East, Ms. Laurie Cabot. Good morning, Laurie. It's Friday, June 20th. Good morning, everyone. The moon is in Libra, and the emphasis is on good manners, consideration, and tact. Venus, Saturn, and Neptune are harsh today, so her feelings are bound to happen. Just bliss out and fantasize a lot and wear rainbows. This is Lori Cabot, a good witch from Salem. Remember, every ending is a beginning. And for all of us, this is law. Where we enter in, from there we must withdraw. Bye-bye. Like most witches, Lori believes she is expert at making potions of all kinds. When the potion is nearly done, she imbues it with her own power. This potion is for protection and meant to be rubbed on the skin. I charge this potion to protect me from all negative and positive energies and forces that may come to do harm. So mote it be. The potion is a pungent mixture containing sea salt, verbane, frankincense, myrrh, and wolves hair. Three times a week, Laurie travels to the nearby city of Marblehead. The purpose of her trip is not to practice witchcraft, but to teach it to interested students. Oh, welcome to Witchcraft 2 class. Um, this is the class that you're going to learn about witch tools. It's our most exciting class, of course. It's fun to uh, learn about mixing potions and about uh, magic wands that everyone thinks is so frivolous. Now, the magic wand varies extremely. This is sterling silver. It has the pentacle on the top. Uh, we have potions. And we know potions are organic perfumes. And we're going to learn how to make a potion for every sign in the zodiac. We're going to also learn how to make our own little spell kit. This is a healing spell. Orange for mercury, that's for, to aid healing. In here is something very simple. This is sea salt. And this is going to prevent illness. What we're going to do is teach you the culmination of all these things so that you can put them together and actually perform or put a spell together and do your magic and use your energy and your power to heal or to change things, um, maybe change the weather. These are very important tools for you. June 21st, for most of Salem, marks the beginning of summer. For witches, it is a high holiday, a time for celebration and worship. It is the summer solstice. Lori Cabot conducts a magic circle with her coven. I charge this circle to protect us from all negative and positive energies and forces that may come to do us harm, so mote it be. So mote it be. On the solstice, we draw in the energy of the sun and Jupiter into this place. We allow it to circulate in this circle. So mote it be. So mote it be.
I charge this chalice with the energy of Jupiter and the sun and the gift of the great mother Isis, so mote it be. So mote it be. Those who today practice witchcraft regard it as a religion. It has only been in recent times that its unorthodox rituals have even been tolerated. We ask that we be granted correctness, balance, purity, and the power of the forces in this circle. For the good of all people, so mote it be. So mote it be. We now hold this energy within our bodies. The witches now form a cone of power, uniting and concentrating their energy. Finally, the magic circle is uncharged. The circle is broken. If Laurie Cabot had practiced witchcraft in colonial Salem, she most certainly would have been hanged. In the 17th century, spirits, devils, and demonic possession were thought to be very real. Witches were believed to be the human servants of evil. Even so, what was the reason that Salem Village suddenly fell into a violent episode of witchcraft hysteria? Dr. Linda Caporal has carefully developed a new and compelling theory. Since the time of the Salem trials, there have been numerous explanations as to the causes of the crisis. And these explanations include that there was mass hysteria, uh, that there was fraud, that the girls were play acting, and that they falsely accused people. The, another explanation is that there was indeed witchcraft in the neighborhood, that the girls had been involved with it and became mentally ill as a consequence of their guilt. These explanations are not really adequate because they don't address the originating causes of the symptoms which first caused the Puritans so much concern. I think that the, the original causes of the girls' behavior, and this was behavior was what started the crisis, was eating contaminated bread, and that the bread is contaminated with a parasitic fungus known as ergot, Ergot is a fungus which grows on grain, most especially on rye, and it has a number of potent pharmacologic agents in it, especially one called isoergine, from which LSD is derived. Was the Salem witchcraft hysteria the result of demonic possession or of a then unknown form of chemical poisoning? The symptoms that are alluded to in the trial records are pinpricking, choking, disorderly behavior, convulsions, hallucinations. These are all the kinds of symptoms that you would expect from convulsive ergotism. Was this the devil loosed in Salem in 1692? Today, the people of Salem seem, at least, to tolerate their witches. And the public practice of witchcraft is taken in stride. Laurie Cabot claims to have the power to radically change the weather. On the waterfront of Salem, she gave it a try. I call on the Archangel Uriel to come and do my bidding. <laughs> I call on the Archangel Gabriel to come and do my bidding. I call on the Archangel Michael to come and do my bidding. I call on the Archangel Raphael to come and do my bidding. We ask that this be granted. The weather did change a little, but no one seemed to mind. I don't have any objections to witchcraft in Salem at all. I enjoy it. It's good for my business. I don't have any objection at all. I, I think if they want to practice witchcraft, they should be able to. I think it's great that they're doing their own thing. The witchcraft stories that go around here draw a lot of people in. Well, it's clear that in the Bible, the witchcraft is condemned. And I, 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 the people who are practicing it are not condemned if they're willing to give it up later. But I feel like they're 
just um, postponing the uh, fullness of life they might enjoy if they look to the true source and not just some uh, playing into the devil's hands, which they're doing, whether they're conscious of it or not. Well, the witches in Salem don't give us any problems. They're uh, very law-abiding. People often ask me, do you think the witch trials are over in Salem, or could witches be persecuted again? And I have a feeling because of our lack of education, uh, there's a possibility through people's belief systems that it could happen again if we do not educate ourselves well enough. People need, um, excuse the expression, scapegoat, um, somewhere to put their anger and their unexplained happenings. But if they really knew what we know, it could never happen again. We don't intend it to happen. It won't happen to the witches of Salem. I can guarantee you that. Despite the horrifying past, witchcraft in Salem is alive and well and determined to survive. The witchcraft hysteria that swept through Salem nearly 300 years ago ended as quickly as it began. Many of the accusing girls made poignant public apologies, and Massachusetts became the first state to remove witchcraft from its catalog of capital offenses. Perhaps the worst of all demons and devils are ignorance, intolerance, and fear. <laughs> <laughs>